this Tashlich ceremony. I'm just going to talk a little about Tashlich and I'll talk about what works for me at Tashlich, like how, what my intention is, will be this year and has been, when it's been successful for me in other years. So page 937, there's a custom, it says on the top of the page, on the first day of Rosh Hashanah, it is customary in the afternoon after Mincha to go to the banks of a river or any stretch of flowing water and say the following verses, okay? So these verses are taken from uh, Micha, um, and basically they talk about how God, talk about God's attributes, and at one point it says God will cast into the depths of the sea all their sins. Okay, so that's from Micha uh, chapter 7. And that's the, the idea that God casting away says, that's where we get the name Tashlich from that verse. And these are the verses that we recite at the moment of Tashlich. And so I just want to talk about a little bit kind of about each part of that sentence on the top of the page. So it says here on the first day of Rosh Hashanah, we go after Mincha. That's when we start to do it. Okay. But if one didn't do it at that time, it can extend. Through Yom Kippur, I saw one place from Shana Rabba, but I think it, until Yom Kippur, it seems to be like the, the standard time one can do it because it's still in the time of tshuva. Um, now, uh, where do you do it? Like it says at the banks of a river or any stretch of flowing water. So it's ideal to have water that's flowing that has fish in it because fish are a, a symbol of blessing and fruit and you know, the pros- fruit, fruitfulness. Um, but if one doesn't have that, I was in Bnei Brak in Israel and they didn't have any running water there, um, like nearby. So I saw on one street, it's a very, very religious neighborhood there. I saw someone just pour like some water down, down like the street and people were saying Tashlich next to that. So the ideal is what it is, but if you're stuck and you don't have it, so I've heard some people like overlook and look at the sea from far away, as long as they could see it. I saw um, some rabbis, talk, some people talk about in the yeshiva that they had like a, uh, um, was a goldfish, uh, like, ten, uh, like a little aquarium or even like a, what is it, a bowl, fish bowl. And they set it next to that with the fish. Okay. So ideally it's the best to get near running work. We have here, um, Rabbi Walbrick's house, people say Tashlich outside of his house. And that's going to be open for people to do that this year as well. Just not in an organized fashion. People can go there whenever they want during Rosh Hashanah. Um, now, just a little bit on, um, so that's, that's that. Now, a little bit on the reasons why we do it, okay? The simple reason says here, God will cast all of our sins into the sea. So this, I guess this is symbolic. We, we're going to there, we're saying these verses where we're kind of uh, having intention that God will forgive us and cast our sins into the sea, it's symbolic action. Um, I saw another nice explanation um, which says that all the kings were coronated next to bodies of water. So it's connecting the same theme of kingship to, to this as well. That's pretty powerful. I don't know exactly how they'll work with the verses, though. The verses seem to be hinting to this idea. And the name, Tashlich, you're casting something away. And another reason that's brought, it's in the name of the Maoriel who really introduced this idea of Tashlich, Kind of made it more popular and he was he was in like the, the 14th 15th century and um, he said that Abraham was passing through on his way to the Akeda to the binding of Isaac he bring uh, Rabbi Sachs brings it here in short on the bottom here he's on the way to the Akeda the sat the um the binding of Isaac and the satan appeared in the form of a body of water and Abraham passed through uh he passed through it in order to do the Akeda the binding of Isaac and he prayed to Hashem when it got all the way up you know to his to his to his head he said Hashem please help me and Hashem um, Shem split it open for him and he, he went forward to, to do the, uh, the binding of Isaac. So the idea behind that is very different. It's not just like casting your sins away, but it's sacrificing yourself for God, like taking action and doing misiru nefesh, you know, to serve God, going beyond uh, the letter of duty to serve God. It's a little bit different. It's like not just casting your sins away. But I, I want to share with you, I think all those are good reasons and, and you can have intention on any of them when you're there. It's good to have some sort of intention. Otherwise, just going next to a body of water and reading some verses and going home. Here's an intention that works for me. And I learned this not from the Ma'ariel, not from um, the any Roshay Yeshiva. I learned this from my um, Hebrew school kids. <laughs> Many years ago when I was teaching in Hebrew school, we had a program uh, where we went to a body of water and we asked all the kids to think of something they wanted to let go of that they're holding on to. It could be like anger. It could be some sort of like 
they're upset about something. And we asked all the kids to come to the sea and we had them write down, we went to this body of water, we had them write down what they wanted to let go of. We explained what letting go means. And we all did a ceremony where we kind of like threw it all into a certain circle and we, they threw their papers in and I think they found it very powerful. For me, that's something that works. Like thinking about what I want to let go of. It's very important on Rosh Hashanah and we're asking God for forgiveness. We're trying to do good things. So it's important to try to like be forgiving, to let go. You know, I talk about asking for forgiveness to other people, all forgiving people. So I try, try to do when I'm there. There's a lot of things you could do. That's something I try to do is think of something I want to let go of, kind of cast it into the, to the, to the body of water. Sometimes these symbolic actions can be very powerful. They can influence us on, on Passover too. We burn chametz. Of course, the Torah says we have to get rid of it, but there's a symbolic piece to that. We're burning away everything we want to get rid of. So here too, maybe it's a little more internal. It's, we're kind of thinking about what we want to let go of and what we want to let go of for the upcoming year so we can be free and like a clean vessel to receive God's blessing. So there's a few intentions you can think about during Tashlich. If you can do it on uh, Rosh Hashanah day, that's great. And it stretches uh, through the young people.